Hey, muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about shear and moment in beams. This is a subject you're going to see in statics and strength of materials, and actually more advanced structural classes as well. And beams are something we see around us all the time. Now, I'm in my little office here, and I have to apologize, they're tearing a building down pretty much right on the other side of my window. So if there's a little bit of background noise, that's all it is. But I don't have a beam in here. I can't make a giant beam structure. Let's do this. Here's a little beam. This is a little piece of balsa wood I have for making things for my classes. Well, how does a beam? How does a beam work? Well, let's say let's say I clamp a beam there. Okay, I've clamped it. It can't it can't move on this end. It can't move this way. It can't move that way, and it can't rotate. Now, fortunately, this is a very flexible beam. So if I push down on this end, it bends. If I push up on this end, it bends. Or if I want to push for both ends, I can get it to bend this way or that way. Okay, beams are able to uh, resist loads in bending. Truss elements, which we've been looking for at, uh, before in the statics class, cannot. They only accept loads in the axial direction. That's why we call them two force members. Beams can handle loads not just along the axis, but across the axis as well. So they can, you know, they can this is a beam. That's not a very strong beam, but it's a beam. So if beams can handle these other loads, how are we going to account for those loads? How do we talk about them? Well, let's start with the way we always start. Let's start with a free body diagram of a cantilevered beam. So imagine this thing right here cantilevered at the end. I've clamped it here so it can't move, and I'm putting a load here uh, down on the uh, end of the beam like that. So here's what it looks like. Now the definition of, of a beam is not extremely precise, but for, for our purposes here, we can assume that a beam is something that's long and slender. A real short cube doesn't act like a beam. The thing I just showed you, that little piece of wood, that does act like a beam. It's long and it's slender, at least across the axis that it's bending in. So here's what it looks like, and there'll be a, a length. Here. Okay, there. There's a beam. No big deal. There's a free body diagram. What? No, it's not. This is a working diagram, isn't it? Not a free body diagram. How do we make this a free body diagram? Well, we cut it free from the structure around it. So let's do that. Keep doing that. So I've cut it free from the structure around it, from its supports. Now, the supports were talking to it in, in the form of uh, forces and moments from between the structure and the beam. So in order to preserve that effect, I've got to include that in the diagram here. Well, let's see. Let's do this. There's what we're going to call the reaction force. And here I'm going to call this reaction moment. All right? And it's easy to see that this is this about this point. This force is trying to make the beam rotate counterclockwise. And this moment here is preventing it from rotating counterclockwise. So this looks OK. Let's do one other thing here. If you've gotten as far in your statics class that you know what the method of joints is, yeah, I know it's kind of a funny name, but there it is, I could cut this beam anywhere I want, and I could write a draw free body diagram just of one segment of the structure. If the whole structure is in static equilibrium, every part of it has to be two. So let's, let's put a fictitious cut right there. It's a fictitious cut. Now, fictitious means it's not real. It means I didn't actually get a, a sawzall and just saw right through the beam here. This is a mathematical cut. We're pretending it's there so we can look at just this part of the beam. So let's just draw that part of the beam now. So there's our force. Well, we know that same reaction force has to be there, and that a, a reaction moment also has to be there, but Reaction, the force is going to be the same. The reaction moment is going to be different because this moment arm is different. Hmm. That means the force and the moment change depending on where we make this cut. Well, where do we make this cut? Let's just let's 
give ourselves a coordinate system, and let's say that's x. All right. So if the, the, the reaction force and the reaction moment I get might be different depending on what value x is, huh, let's just do that. Does that look okay? Sure, let's do that. All right, so this thing right here, this is the shear in the beam, and this is the moment in the beam. And because they're functions of x, I can plot them if I want to. Let's do that. Okay. Let's just make myself a little set of axes here. And there's x. And that'll be this will be the length of the beam here. It's not quite to scale, but you get the idea. Well, let's just do what this says. Let's, matter of fact, let's give this some numbers. Let's make that a thousand newtons, and let's make L equal one meter from end to end. So the, the beam is a meter long, and there's a, a, a force of a thousand newtons on the end of it. Well, what's this got to be? Well, this and this have to be equal and opposite. The sum of the forces have to be zero. So right there at zero, this has to be a thousand newtons. And as I go and go and go and go at different cuts along the beam, that stays until I get to the very, very end here. It's always going to be a thousand newtons. So let's do this. It goes over, 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 over until I get to the very end and I hit that. And it comes back down again. And let's see, I've got different colors here. Maybe I can go all multimedia on you. Okay, and that's the shear distribution along the beam. Okay, that's, that's this force here going along the beam. That's f of x. Okay, well, what do we do now when we want to do the moment? That's, that's the next thing. Let's, let's even do this. There's the shear. So I can do the same thing with the moment, right? Now let's get started here. We're going to hit a speed bump here in a second. We'll get around it. Okay, that's going to be moment here in a second. But we got a problem. For this diagram, and what I'm making here is going to be called a shear moment diagram. There, I have more videos on that. But we're sneaking up on something called a shear moment diagram. For this to work, we have to think long and hard about our coordinate system. Now, as I drew this coordinate system, I think you, you think I'm using, in fact, this is not a free body diagram until I put a coordinate system in it, looks like that. This is the, this is the uh, coordinate system I almost always use. Can you see that? Uh, you can kind of see that. I think you got it. Let's, in fact, let's move it down. Okay, so here's the coordinate system we almost always use, all right? So this moment here looks like it ought to be positive, right? Hmm. But it's not. Because we have two coordinate systems here. There is this coordinate system. To get this drawing to work, we have to use something that's either called the designer's sign convention or the beam sign convention. It gets called two different things. And here's how it works. Where's my beam? This is positive curvature. This is negative curvature. Any moment that creates this is a positive moment. Any moment that creates this is a negative moment. That may or may not fit with that. In fact, a lot of times it doesn't. So here's, here's how you're going to remember this. Now, I'm going to erase this over here, so just so I can get some of my board back. Now, here's one of the stupidest things I am ever going to put on this board, okay? But you're going to remember it. Okay, this, remember, positive 
negative. Positive. Negative. There you have it, folks. Laugh it up if you want to, but you're going to remember this. Now, the reason I want you to learn this is because this sign convention is what makes this work. Now, mathematically, moment is the accumulated shear along the beam. Mathematically, to get moment, you integrate shear. And for that to work, you got to use this coordinate system. So let's do what we, we did before. Now, I, I erased it here. But the moment at the end, the reaction moment, was 1,000 newton meters. 1,000 newtons acting at a distance of a meter, at least it was before I erased it. Now, shear is positive here. This is zero. What I did is I started went to my up force, followed it down along the beam to get to the down force here. So this is positive up, this is positive shear. And in order for this to work, when moment is accumulated shear, I have to start here. There's zero. There's one th minus 1,000. I can move this over. Minus 1,000 Newton meters. Negative. Negative. The reason it was negative, remember, let's put this down, clamped, pushing down on the end. All right? Clamped, pushing down on the end. Well, that sure looks like negative curvature to me. That sure looks like that. So the moment that created this had to be negative. That's why this is negative. As I accumulate shear, positive shear going across the beam, here's what it looks like. All right. And let's get my marker here. There's moment. There. All right. Another way to look at this, if you want, is every time you need a point on this curve, draw another component on another segment of this beam. That distance right there is L minus X. There's my 1,000 Newtons. There's my 1,000 Newton reaction force. And then here's my moment, my reaction moment. All right? So this and this are that and that. And what you'll see here is this L minus X gets smaller and smaller and smaller. X gets closer and closer to L, so this goes to zero. Right? Um, the moment, this di force times that distance, gets closer and closer to zero, which is exactly what it's doing. So there's a quick introduction. This is shear and moment in beams. Um, big idea here is that we're working just from free body diagrams. If you can draw a free body diagram, you are good to go. And the only problem we have, the only complication is this bookkeeping that we have to uh, recognize the designer sign convention where that's positive and that's negative. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.